Today's video is entitled Simple Harmonic Motion and Explanation. And that's right, we're going to go over an explanation of simple harmonic motion. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe. Click the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition, I have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. I have simulations, I have practice problems, I have notes, I have examples. You can get the link in the description below. Go check it out. And I made a bunch of other videos for simple harmonic motion, pendulum, and springs. You can link to those videos in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Now, in this video, we're going to start simple harmonic motion and explanation. We're just going to come up with a nice, simple definition for simple harmonic motion. That definition would be the periodic motion of an object where the restoring force, Fs, is directly proportional to the displacement. Okay, and the most common example you'll see for simple harmonic motion is a horizontal spring on some surface with a mass attached to it. And if we have the mass at the equilibrium position, then we have the spring at its natural length. But we can displace the spring by pulling it to the right, applying a force to it, and we would give it some displacement, which we give the symbol x, and to the right is typically positive. We could then release that spring or compress it as we would do over here, and then the spring would be displaced or the mass would be displaced some distance to the left, which we call that negative displacement. Okay, so the periodic motion and the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement. Now the next thing is that the restoring force always acts towards the equilibrium position. This is the equilibrium position when there's no mass, excuse me, no force is being applied to the mass. And therefore on the right hand side, when we extend the spring to the right, then the restoring force is going to be acting towards the left. And if we compress the spring to the left, then of course the restoring force is going to be acting to the right like that. Okay, and we can use this equation, which says this force on the spring is equal to minus k, which is the spring constant, times x, which is the displacement. This equation is known as Hooke's Law. And this is the equation that we can use to calculate either the force the spring constant, or the displacement. This minus sign does not mean that the force on the right-hand side or the values on the right-hand side are less than zero. It simply means that this force is going to be acting in the opposite direction of this force. This would be in the positive direction, and this would be in the negative direction. If you apply a force to in one direction, the spring is going to be pulling back in the other direction per Newton's third law of motion, equal and opposite reactions, okay? I made another video just going over and discussing what the spring constant is. You can, of course, find that video in the upper right-hand corner of this video. That is Hooke's Law. Now, this results in oscillating motion. Oscillating motion simply means that this mass, if we extend the spring by applying a force to it and then release it, it's going to move back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's going to do that forever because we often say that there is no friction between the mass and the surface upon which the mass is resting and that there's no loss in energy of the system due to, for example, deformation of the spring. Because normally as the spring moves back and forth, it would heat up and some um, energy would be lost from that system and the spring would eventually slow down. Also, of course, the same thing would be if there's some friction. But we are going to use an ideal situation when we say there's no friction and there's no loss of energy from that system. Okay, so I would say those are the important things that you should know about the definition, okay, or the characteristics of simple harmonic motion. The next thing are some important terms that you should be aware of. Some important terms that you should be aware of are one is the natural length of the spring. The natural length of the spring is the length of the spring when no force is being applied to it. For example, if you just take a spring, attach a mass to it, and lay it on the table, 
and maybe attach one end to the wall or some other surface, then the natural length is just the length of the spring as it's sitting there. You're not applying a force to it. You're not pulling it. You're not compressing it. You're not extending it. You're not squeezing it. That would be the natural length. Okay? Now, if uh, we want to look at what we call that position, that's called the equilibrium position. Okay, that's the position when the net force acting on the spring is zero, when the spring is at its natural length. And for this example, this diagram, x equals zero, this is the natural length, and this is the equilibrium position. Okay, that's when it's at equilibrium. Then we have the displacement. Displacement typically gets the symbol x, even if you're doing something in the horizontal direction, excuse me, in the vertical direction, we simply just leave the x there, and we say that the displacement is the symbol x, and then that's the distance away from the equilibrium position. So as we talked about in the previous slide, if we extend the spring, this would be the displacement in the positive direction. If we compress the spring, then this would be the displacement in the negative direction. But you have to remember that there's also this term called the amplitude, which we give the symbol capital A, and that is the magnitude of the maximum displacement. So I'd like to think of it like there's all these displacements, but when you reach the maximum displacement, then that's the amplitude. There's all these displacements along here, but when you reach the maximum displacement, then that is the amplitude. Okay? So please be aware of those terms when you're describing uh, the motion for simple harmonic motion. Okay, now there's a couple others we should go through. One is the cycle. Okay, what is a cycle? A cycle is when that object, which is undergoing simple harmonic motion, completes one out and back motion. Okay, you can measure it from various different places. You can measure it from here, and it goes back and forth and comes back to the same location. You could also say if you extend it, it goes out and back and comes back to the same location. From here, you could say, okay, you hold, you compress it, and then it goes out and back and comes back to that same location. It has to complete one full back and forth motion to the same location. Then there's the period, which we often give the capital T because period is measured of time. It's a special kind of time, so we give it capital T. And it's the time for the object to complete one cycle. A cycle is one out and back motion. The period is the time it takes to do that one back and forth motion. And then, of course, the frequency is the number of cycles that occur, the number of back and forth motions that occur in one second. Okay, period is measured in time. Frequency is also cycles per second. Okay, and the period is typically measured in seconds. Also, that's the base unit for time in the metric system. Now, there's a special relationship between the period and the frequency because the period is one over the frequency. You can see they're inversely proportional. The period and the frequency are inversely proportional. The period is one over the frequency, and that means that the frequency is one over the period. All right. Now we said the period is measured in seconds. That's the units for seconds. Now the frequency, it's a little different, is measured in hertz. Okay, it's the number of cycles per second. Sometimes you'll see s to the minus one. Sometimes you'll see one over s. But most commonly you'll see that it's measured in hertz. And hertz has the abbreviation of capital HZ. All right. So that's the units, and that is the definition for cycle, period, and frequency. Okay, now we want to look a little deeper and talk about what is going on with the oscillating motion of our spring. And we're going to look at three key places. We're going to look first at the equilibrium position. Then we'll look over here at position number one, when we have the extension of the spring. And then we have this position number two, when we have the compression of the spring. And all of this goes for when the spring is oscillating back and forth. Okay, we have the at the natural position, the natural length at the equilibrium position. Let's just say we extend the spring, apply force to it, and we release it. And now the spring is oscillating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we're going to look at the displacement, the amplitude, the force, the acceleration, and the velocity at these three key locations. Okay, so we'll typically we'll start at the equilibrium position when there's no extension, and then we'll go to position one, and then we'll go to position two. Okay, when we're at the when the spring is at the equilibrium position, even when it's moving back and forth, when it's at the equilibrium position, we call that the equilibrium position. 
Then when it reaches position number one, that's the greatest displacement in the positive direction. When it reaches position number two, that's the greatest displacement in the negative position. Okay, so we have the equilibrium position, and then for the greatest displacements, we have the amplitude and the amplitude, like that. Okay? Now, we're going to go back to our Hooke's Law equation, which says that the force is equal to the spring constant times x. x is the displacement. So let's talk about the force at each of these three locations. Let's start in the middle again at the equilibrium position. Well, the equilibrium position, even when the spring is moving back and forth, when it gets to the equilibrium position, that's at equilibrium, and x is 0. There's no displacement. And you can see here, if we put x in this equation to be 0, x times any number is, of course, 0 times any number of the spring constant is going to be 0. So that means there's no force acting on the spring. The net force acting on the spring is 0 when it's at its equilibrium position. Okay, and that means that when it's at its greatest displacement, it's going to have the greatest displacement. That's when it's going to have the greatest force. Okay, when it's at this equilibrium position, the force will be acting back, excuse me, when it's at this position, the force will be acting back towards the equilibrium position. And when it's, when it's compressed, it'll also have the greatest force, and that force will be acting back towards the equilibrium position. Okay, so zero displacement, zero force, greatest displacement, greatest force, greatest displacement, greatest force. Okay, now we're going to get out Newton's second law, which says that F equals ma, the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And now let's talk about the acceleration. Well, if there's no force acting on the spring, okay, or no force acting on the object, then the, then the force is going to be zero, and that means, therefore, the acceleration also has to be zero. So when you're at the equilibrium position, the force, the net force on, this, on the object is zero, and the acceleration of the object is also 0 meters per second squared. But now, over here, we have the greatest uh, displacement and the greatest force, and the greatest force is also going to give us the greatest acceleration. And the same thing at this position number 2, where we have the greatest displacement, we have the greatest force, and therefore, per Newton's second law, we're also going to have the greatest acceleration. Okay, now, the next one is for the velocity. We're going to do the velocity in a little bit more intuitive manner, okay, because we know the spring is oscillating back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. When it reaches its greatest displacement, just before it starts back in the other direction, just like when you throw something up in the air, what's the velocity of the object when it reaches its maximum displacement? Well, you should be understand that, or you know, have an intuitive sense that at that position, the greatest displacement, the velocity is going to be zero meters per second. It's going to kind of stop for a, set, a moment before it moves back in the other direction. And that's the same thing over here at position number two. The velocity is going to be equal to zero meters per second. Well, that means that in the middle, okay, in the middle, at the equilibrium position, when the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero. But at that position, it's going to have the greatest velocity. Okay, so when we're at the equilibrium, we have no force no acceleration, but the greatest velocity. When we're at either position one or position two, we have the greatest displacement. We have amplitude. We have the greatest force acting on the object. We have the greatest acceleration, but no velocity. Okay? So that is how those important parts of simple harmonic motion work. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that simple, straightforward, step-by-step explanation of simple harmonic motion. If you did, please do all of the following. Please subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should give me a thumbs up. You should leave me a comment. Click the notifications bell. And don't forget, caring is sharing. No, sharing is caring. Share the video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you cared. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.